All right, guys, we are starting off day 13 in a spot you have probably seen before. That is right. We are in front of a dilapidated shed that holds our fourth freezer. I swore I was not going to start the fourth freezer before September because I don't like the idea of running an outdoor freezer in August when it could potentially be hot. Luckily, we've had some nice cool nights and the temperatures seem to have dropped down to a little bit more seasonal. So hopefully we can make this work or hopefully I can get it emptied quick enough to shut it off. So yesterday we went and picked up that lamb meat that I talked about earlier. Two sheep, 100 pounds, all ground up and have nowhere to put it. The freezers are full. We've been putting so much fruit and vegetables and things away for later canning purposes that there just isn't room. And so we started it up. Let's take a look. So not much in there yet, but that fills the bottom. If you've got any uh, suggestions on some canned recipes, I don't just want to do chili meat or taco meat. I mean, I'm going to do those things, but I want something different. I was thinking like, can you can sweet and sour meatballs? I don't know. I mean, pineapple, peppers, the sauce, all that good stuff, just so you can open a jar and put it on rice. Let me know in the comments below if there's some things that you guys make with it, because I'd really love to give it a try. But before we can get to dealing with this meat problem slash freezer problem, we need to finish up my second batch of August stew, which I'd already started chopping things up and the kids finished it up for me today. So that was wonderful. And now I've got all these ingredients out here. I'm not going to bore you with the details. You can go back day four, five, six. I believe that's the day that we did the August stew, which will include the recipe. I'm going to just quickly do this and I'll show you the end result. August stew is something I've said numerous times in numerous videos we use so much of and I really would like to have 52 jars. All right, so we have about 25 minutes left on our batch of August stew. It needed to get done. I didn't bore you with the details, but now before it gets too late and too dark, we're gonna head out to the dilapidated shed to get some meat because we're gonna do some prep for tomorrow. Because tomorrow I'm gonna make taco meat in the pressure canner. So I want to put black beans in that and meat and corn and all sorts of good stuff. So we need to get things organized. All right, so we've got our eight pounds of meat here. That'll be nice and defrosted by tomorrow, hopefully. And I've separated out one pound of black beans. Now we need to soak these overnight so that they are ready for this canning process tomorrow. So that's the plan. You want to have about two inches of water above the beans. I'm not sure how you word that, but anyways, submerged with two inches above them so that they can absorb that water overnight. So that is where we're at. We're gonna leave it there and you're gonna have to stay tuned to see how we get on with this tomorrow morning. All right, guys, it is time to get this started. We are making our taco meat today. We've soaked those black beans overnight and now I've drained them and I'm getting them into my pot here and we're going to be putting four cups of water over top. These need to simmer, not boil, for 30 minutes before we can combine them with our meat. So this is great because while these are simmering, we're gonna take the time to make some taco seasoning and also brown off our meat and onions. Now, one thing that is very important is that you are making your taco seasoning from scratch because when you're canning, some store-bought seasonings do contain cornstarch or flour or some sort of thickening type agents and you don't want that. So just in case you are a person who buys yours, I've always made my own and make it in huge quantities anyways, but make sure you're making it on your own or you know that there is no flour or anything in there. But that's our only clause here as we get going. So I usually mix up my taco seasoning in a 500 ml jar basically, and I need a whole cup of taco seasoning for this recipe. And as you can see, I don't have. So to make this seasoning, you're going to need 10 tablespoons of chili powder, four tablespoons of cumin, three tablespoons of black pepper, one and a half tablespoons of each of the following, onion powder, garlic powder, oregano, and salt. And last ingredient you're going to need is a hot chili powder or a cayenne pepper, depending what you have. And you want that to taste, I usually put two to two and a half teaspoons in, but you can use your discretion. If you like it a little spicier, go for it for sure. Now, the one thing we're going to have to probably do here is we're going to have to grind some garlic. So as I predicted, we fell short on the garlic powder. I had less than a half a tablespoon actually in the container. So we're going to grind some up right now. And basically there's our uh, 
little cubes of it that you saw in the previous every bit counts. I'm just gonna put maybe three quarters full. You wanna go to roughly that little line in there. And away we go. And here you can see, there we go. So I had filled it up to right there, that little max line. So it makes about half what you've got in here when you powder it down, but that was barely any work for the uh, grinder and it looks fantastic. So we're gonna get the rest into this jar and then get her mixed up. Now, the one thing I'm going to say is usually I wait till my jar's empty to make this and it's like a perfect fill. But of course I had that little bit in the bottom and normally what I would do is just put the lid on and shake, right? But I don't have a whole lot of room in here, so I have a feeling I'm going to have to stir it a little bit. Oh, it's, it's sort of blending, but definitely the bottom is just all chili powder. So, going to have to use a stir. But otherwise, normally it fills it to about there, and it's like perfect for shaking. It's a great way to make this recipe. But this time, going to have to use a spoon. So, as I mentioned, this is a lot of meat. We need to get it a little bit browned before we add in our onions. But basically, we want to uh, chop, I use the food processor, chop up those onions. You want roughly three cups or three onions worth. It really is kind of whatever you have left kicking around in the uh, packet. So, one thing that is kind of exceptionally important when you're doing this is to drain your meat. Get all that excess fat out. And I'm doing that before I add onions or seasoning or anything because then that gives me a lard product that I can use for cooking afterwards, right? No waste around here. So that is something that's very important if you're gonna be canning this, to remove as much of that uh, grease as you can do. My method is obviously a scoop in it. I've got a measuring cup and you can see here what's happening. The uh, fat is coming up and separating from the liquid at the bottom. I'm going to scoop what I can out of this that'll be nice and clean and I'm going to put it into a separate jar. So next we're breaking out the big pot and we're going to transfer that meat from the wok into the pot. We're going to add our onions, fry that for a little bit. I might even put the onions in the pot first with a little bit of um, meat just to kind of make sure that the onions get good and fried, then put the rest of the meat in, drain our beans, add them in, and then we're going to come back and we're going to go through all the rest of the ingredients in this chili meat and then it just has to come to a boil for 10 minutes and get canned up and into the pressure canner. So here we go. So in my pot so far, I have my one pound of black beans, my eight pounds of ground lamb. Now, one thing I should have said at the beginning of this was you could use this recipe for ground beef, ground pork. It really doesn't matter whatever your preference is, do a blend, but this is a versatile recipe. You can use it for whatever. And our onions. So that's all we've got so far. We've drained all the fat out. Now, next thing we're going to be putting in is our spice because I want to get that stirred right around. So we've got one cup of our taco seasoning, which we've already gone through, but I will put the recipe down in the description below. And eight cups of corn. Now, after that, it's kind of a use your discretion. I like to put in one jar of my charred salsa. It gives a few little chunky tomato bits and a little bit of uh, hot peppers, and then four cups of my tomato juice. Now, if that doesn't seem like it's going to be enough liquid, I will put in a bit more tomato juice, but usually that works just great. So hopefully that'll be the same thing this time. So right away, I can see I drained my meat very well. So I've already gone and got another jar and we're just gonna kind of add half, and then we'll see how it sits. I also need to wait for it to kind of get that corn defrosted a little bit too, because we might get a bit of moisture from that as well. But it is looking, we're gonna go a little bit more. You know what, we're gonna bring this to a boil. I'm just gonna put it all in. So that's a full eight cups of the tomato juice. You could also do partially tomato juice, partially broth. Uh, it really is up to you. Oh, that's looking perfect. I'll show you, it's looking perfect. So there you can see what I mean. We've just kind of gotten to the top with the liquid. I don't like it to be too runny because sometimes we use this on things like nachos or taco salad. So I don't want it to have too much liquid. So that is looking fantastic. And now that's everything in there. We just have to wait for this to come to a boil. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go and get my clean jars and set them up so that we are ready to package this up and get it into the pressure canner. It is time to can this up. It smells incredible. I'm 
quite happy because I think there's going to be enough left over for dinner tonight, which is awesome. Now, one thing I will say is 500 mil or pints, 75 minutes in the pressure canner. Quartz, 90 minutes in the pressure canner. I'm going with 750 mil because this is the perfect size for our family when we're pulling it out for things. So I'm going to do the 90 even though it's only a 750. Uh, I couldn't actually find information on that, so I think that's the best way to go with. But let's get it jarred up because it's been boiling for a bit now. <laughs> One inch head space. And finger tight. Basically, I just kind of put my hand there and just a little, and just kind of a little friction, but nothing like you're not grabbing it. And then into the canner. All right, so a slight dilemma. I thought I could get nine jars in here, but I forgot these are the same size as wide mouths, which means I can only get eight. And I have a lot left over. So that was a bit of a screw up on my part, but. I'm not going to can up these extra two jars. I'm going to just hang on to it. And I think maybe what I'll do is I'll make another batch because this is something that we eat all the time. I want that meat out of the freezer anyways. And another eight jars would be fantastic. So if I do a half batch and add it to this, I think we'd be pretty good to go. Uh, or we could just eat it and do another round anyways. I don't know. But we're going to get these eight jars canned up and that's pretty good for today. It is hot especially in the house. I know you can probably hear the fan going in the background, but there's not much I can do about that. If I turn off the fan, it is really bad. But the joys of canning in August, <laughs> I think I need to invest in an outdoor kitchen. I always do a little bit of olive oil, just a smidgen, whoa, see, just a little bit on my hands there. And I just put it on the ring. This just extends the life of your gasket. It's not required, but it does make a huge difference. I've been canning with this for years, and I'm only on my second gasket, which is pretty awesome. Without any further ado, we are going to seal it up, line up our arrows, seal it up. I love this Presto canner. And turn it up. I know, I know, I said I wasn't going to come back and pick any more berries, but here I am rounding off these three days back at the blackberry patch. But honestly, look at these berries. It is too good to resist. I'm going to be, I don't know what the word is, ruthless, I don't know, but I'm only going to pick the ones that are easily accessible. I am not going to get all scratched up for this. It is just going to be whatever is ready, easy to pick, is going in my bucket. So let's see how many I can get and we will get them in the freezer and then I swear this is going to be the end of berry picking. I mean it, like just look at these. How can I not come back here and pick them? They're big and beautiful and free, right? So might as well pick them. On a total side note, these little apples from the tree behind me are gorgeous. So looks like we're gonna have to start making some applesauce or something as well. Yay. Well, there are still so many blackberries left, but my two buckets are full and my allocated time is spent. I do feel bad because I feel like I'm wasting them, but I only have so much space in the freezer and I only have so much time to spend picking berries and I only have so much need for berries. So the birds are gonna enjoy the rest of them, I think. On a total different note and a sneak peek at what will be to come at the end of the month, look at the fruit on these trees. Absolutely gorgeous. I did try one, they are nowhere near ready. I'd say we're probably two weeks off still, but that's a good thing. So we're in, it's hot, I had to do a wipe down, but now is the ultimate question. Can we fit these in the freezer to freeze them? As you know, we put them in little uh, silicone trays or on cookie sheets to flash freeze before we bag them. So hopefully we have enough room in here. As you saw at the beginning of this video, we did break down and start up that fourth freezer, but my intention is not to have it running long. So stay tuned to see if that happens. First, we need to remove the cat, come on. Oh, and let's take a look. My handy dandy proper upper tool. I think, whoop, I think we can do this. Let's see. Let's try with the big cookie sheet first. Oh yeah, that'll go. That will go. So we'll get one of them open on that. Beauty of collecting the blackberries off your own property. There is no need to wash these. We know they haven't been sprayed or anything like they might have on the side of the road. Look at that. Oh, we got one with a 
little stem thingy on it. These blackberries, I'm just going to hold some up for you guys because they are incredible right now. Look, look at that. Nice, big, juicy. My camera is wobbling a little bit. I do apologize. That is what I like to see when it comes to blackberries. So we're going to get them frozen. So we got one in here, get this leaf out. And now I'm going to use two of these for the other two containers. Split it between them. Oh gosh, they are just so gorgeous. I might have to go back. I know what I said, but I might have to go back. But as much as I'd like to stay down here in the nice cool basement, it's so much cooler than upstairs. Uh, I need to get going on something that I got while I was at the back for dinner tonight. So let's take it up. It's a bonus thing, nothing to do with preserving, but I'm so excited about it. So while picking those blackberries today, I had a race with my sheep. My favorite tree was dropping apples like crazy. This is the one I usually make apple pie fill out of. They're a bit smaller, but they still taste great. And I grabbed what I could before the sheep got in there. So tonight I'm gonna attempt to make some low sugar apple crisp. And I'll maybe tell you about it later if it turns out okay. Well guys, in the end, I opted not to make more of the taco meat right now. So we're having it for dinner, taco salad, yummy. I love this, doesn't set my blood sugars off and I can crumple up a little bit of nachos just for that little treat. But the real treat's coming, hang on. I am so excited to try this. Only a half a cup of brown sugar in the whole thing. I mean, I used to make it and there'd be almost two cups of sugar in this. So I'm curious to see how it turns out. And we used almond flour with large flake oats. So as far as blood sugars go, I think this is a pretty safe snack, but I'll put a community tab post to let you know how it tasted. Well guys, we as usual ran late last night and I didn't get a chance to do a wrap up on day 13, 14, 15. We're now on day 16, but I'm gonna do a quick little wrap up before I head to my friend Angie's for some good canning today. In the end, we had our eight jars of taco meat, 18 jars of August stew, and a few other little things tapped in there, but I think it was a great week, but the real bonus for the week was, look at this. I found pickling spice, yes, at Bulk Barn. Thank you to everyone who had suggestions of where to look. We tried Canadian Tire, Walmart, Superstore, so many different places, but Bulk Barn did have it in the end, so I got enough. This is probably enough to last me years, especially since I don't have the best luck growing pickles, or cucumbers, I guess you should say. But I think it was a great week. The uh, apple crisp was, mm, I will definitely make sure I do a community tab post with the picture and I'll put the little recipe of what I used. It was very simple, but just a little bit of tweaking. I honestly think I could have put less sugar in. Definitely gonna push the boundaries a little bit more in the future. So stay tuned, day 13, no. <laughs> so stay tuned for 16, 17, 18, where we do a little bit more canning, going to, like I said, to my friend Angie's, which who knows what we'll get up to. And, I do think I need to pick some more berries, but we'll see if that happens or not. I'm trying to stay strong and go, I really don't need them, but don't want to waste them. So hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one and we'll talk to you later. Excellent. Oh, wait, I'm back. <laughs> I forgot. I meant to mention. So I've been tracking all of my canning for this year and I just wanted to do a quick recap at this point in the video because August 15th is really kind of the middle of the month. So in total, just for canned jars for the Every Bit Counts, I have canned 60 so far this, this season, but in total for 2024, all year, I've done 208 jars to date. Now we haven't hit tomato season or anything else yet, so I do know this is going to go up, but I also had made the decision at the beginning of this year that I wasn't going to can as much as I had last year because I think we did a little bit extra. So just a quick little recap on how we're sitting so far for this year.